Today, my plan is to talk about false theorem and its implications in blockchain technology in general. Um, I feel like I write well, uh, what I'm trying to, I'm hoping to do very, very introductory and maybe see some consequences. I'm not gonna go very deep, but just see some examples and what happens. So first I will start to just some review or on honest versus rational models. Um, afterwards, I will introduce like the most basic game and just see some definitions like mathematical definitions of strategies, uh, Nash equilibria, um, explain some motivating examples in blockchain technology that we have and arise naturally, um, and the problems of diffic and difficulties that players have um, in stage games to cooperate. Afterwards, we, we will move to infinite repeated games and see what happens when we model this well, with this confactor and explain actually what fault theorem is and we will go backwards and see what happens when we apply this model to the, um, uh, to the games we, we will see before, and afterwards, well, explain some conclusions and future work. So at the beginning in distributed systems, um, in general, um, you assume that like you have nodes, ones are Byzantine and some others are honest, you give some instructions and they do it, and that's cool. However, in general, like a more in blockchain technology that you have incentives, I think we should not assume that, that players are honest, but players are rational, and they have a lot of freedom of action, like a lot of freedom to take some actions and increase their own revenue. Um, I think, uh, like, and that's what I would define as individual rationality, is like, it's an Asian, it's rational, it will try to maximize its own revenue. And the first example that we actually, in general, accept in blockchain technology is when a miner is constructing a block with max fees. It's not putting its own transactions, the only thing is it receives a set of transactions with his own um, gas price bits and, and gas units and tries to like, with some constraints that for example, the sum of gas used is bounded. Um, which block can construct that, that maximizes its own revenue, right? So a dummy node, or whatever does that mean, like just would pick some random transactions with an order by timestamp or transaction hash or for whichever route um, it chooses. But rational note, um, what it would try to do is uh, like solve this optimization problem. Um, this is formal mathematic way of grinding it. But this is also known as the NAXA problem and it's well known to be a very hard uh, problem. It's an NP problem that doesn't have any efficient solution. But the Ethereum nodes um, are coded in a way that they solve very well this problem with a greedy approximation algorithm. So we assume in some sense that nodes are more or less rational. And maybe another example that maybe was not um, thought at the beginning, I will say something like that, is like MEEP, um, well, MEB, like this maximum statical value that prefers all these extra profits that you can make by censoring, ordering, or including some transactions. So, well, this is a dash of all the, of like, right by flashbots of all the uh, cumulative MIP that have been extracted. So, okay, like these are in general are optimization problems that can be solved by a player just competing, like, for example, for a miner, it's just like, it sees and it solves this problem. But in general, in this sense, now he is not being um, competing against other players. In order to em like, em simulate that properly, I think we, we should introduce some tools like um, used in game theory in general. Like, so we'll go for the, be like, more, the most simple case just to understand um, what I will try to explain later on. And it's a, a formal definition maybe of a game. A game is just like we have a set of players that they have each one, they have their own set of actions that they can take. And for all these um, sequential, like parallel actions that they have taken, they have an utility function, and they want to maximize this, um, this utility function. Um, an example of this would be the classic rock, paper, scissor problem or the prisoner's dilemma problem. Um, but these problems is like, okay, this is, what does this, how does this relate to blockchain technology? Well, maybe we can now see, a f well, not now, so maybe we need some more formal definitions. But so now we have the notion of a game. We can define a strategy of like just picking a, a, an action that tries to maximize my own revenue, or maybe a mixed strategy that I choose one randomly. For example, in rock, paper, scissors, I choose randomly which one I will take. 
Um, maybe one of the most com uh, important concepts in game theory in general is like the notion of Nash equilibrium. That is what, in general, will um, what what could what could one could expect to happen in reality, or the game, or the agents once they are like competing against each other, like um, tend to. And fundamentally, the definition is like you have some set of agents that have a lot of strategies. Um, and Nash equilibrium is on this table. There is no way of there's, there's no unilateral deviation that I can take in order to increase my own utility. So in some sense, it's like I won't move. If, if we are in this state, I won't move, and I will keep doing the, the, the strategy. And a very important theorem uh, proved, by, proved well by Nash is that every game has at least uh, Nash equilibrium. OK, this is pure theory. It's just an introduction. But let's see not like a real case scenario that arises naturally in, in, in blockchain technologies. Like, for example, when we have bots competing for an arbitrage opportunity. So let's say now that there are two bots that found exactly the same arbitrage opportunity that have a value of $100. So moreover, both players know that the other player have found this opportunity. And they both, well, through Flashbots, this is just a first price auction. They send a transaction to extract this uh, opportunity. Um, and they pay, they pay some cost uh, for, for exacting it through a private channel, so they don't see each other's bits. Um, and the, the action that, uh, like the transaction that, that wins, is the one that has, has the highest bit, highest bit. So this is the informal description, but now we can see the formal description. is like, we have two players. The space of action they can take is any real positive number. The bit can be any, any number. Um, we have this quasi-linear function, but fundamentally it's like, if I win the bit, I obtain 100 minus what I have to pay, that is the bit. If we tie, we can, we can say that randomly is chosen or, or we split it. And if we lose, we just like um, we get zero. So bad thing, uh, it's not that easy to study the equilibrium of this game because uh, there is no dominant strategy. Um, but good thing is if you work a little bit, you can prove that there is a unique Nash equilibrium. And this equilibrium is actually paying everything to the miner. Well, this is bad for bots in general, but this is very good for the system in the sense that we will have more um, egalitarian payoffs and therefore like, I think like, this isn't, won't be like, it's, in general I think it's a something good to like, have a more fair way of distributing the rewards in, in our system. Um, maybe a second example that um, I could describe uh, that we have in, uh, in blockchain it's like this construction right now, it's not like it's in production, but it's a layer two that works also with threshold decryption scheme um, in order to mitigate from running, for example. So the, just like an overview of how the protocol works, um, the transactions are uh, sent to encrypt. Um, the transactions are sent to encrypt, like with an encrypt threshold decryption scheme. So you need a subgroup of, of nodes to decrypt it um, to reveal the content. So how it works, it's in the first phase, you People send the, the, trans, like, the crypto transaction. Nodes with uh, PBFT protocol can like commit to a block, and once they are commi once they committed, um, they reveal the content of the block and they execute the transactions. But if some of the subset of of, of no let's say if some subset of of, of the nodes deviate, um, they get slashed and they lose some depositors. So this is a game that. If we go formally with just um, n equals, like with two players, very simple case, we have just two nodes. They, they have these encrypted transactions. Um, um, what we can assume that each transaction should have an, a MIP opportunity, that is uh, this value EB. Um, we have the strategy that is commit and revealing, that is what the protocol wants to um, us to do. The real and committing, that would be like, first we reveal the secret of the transaction, and afterwards we commit. And if possible, we like front run this transaction, for example. Um, then we have the reward of the block. And finally, we have this slashing value. What we can assume is a very, very, it's much bigger than DB. So the biomatrix form of the game will have this that is very, very close to the Pisonar's Dilemma game. Um, and the thing that the, the personal Dilemma game is that there is a strictly dominant strategy. And therefore, yeah, you can, like, there is a unique national equilibrium, and it's very straightforward, so it's commit and revealing. So sometimes this construction, what 
allows you to to say is like it's a good mechanism to it's a good mechanism to like um, prevent prevent uh, MIP extraction at some in some sense not all MIP of course but but for example from running. Well, this is purely theoretical, right? So, in both examples, we have seen that through the competition, um, they didn't extract all, all these opportunities, all the payoff they could because of the competition itself. So, in the first example, we see a bot that just because they were competing, uh, they could extract an, uh, a, like a profit of $100, but they ended up paying everything uh, to the miner. So they have incentives to cooperate and achieve some consensus of like distributing fairly between um, both of them like these um, these profits, right? So as well, I will repeat, like they have uh, like they have incentives to cooperate. They have incentives to like let's say, okay, let's stop competing somehow and let's just, like it's because they, there is a ton of money. So what are the difficulties in general to cooperate? Um, I will say first is like, like the anonymous players, so how can they like um, interact, how can they communicate and establish a protocol in order to, to like achieve consensus. They also, they are not able to cooperate, like to commit to future strategy or commit to future like um, actions. And if so, they will always have incentives to deviate from commitment. For example, in the, in the bot, arbitrage bot example, I will say, hey, I will just be three we will, uh, you can be three, and at the last point I will be four, and I will, I, and I will win the, the auction. So let's say that in this, in this case, it's very hard to achieve consensus. The, if the play is just played once, it's, it's in general very, very hard, or it won't happen because the, of the rationality of players. But now what happens if the game is not just played once? What happens if the game is repeated? Um, and the players are non-myopic. That means that they are not just concerned for present payoffs, but also they are concerned for future payoffs. So let's say we have a sequence of, of, of wealth, um, and we can say that they like, the way of simulating, the way of thinking about um, the wealth is like this infinite sum of like this delta fa factor times the, the reward. So a way of thinking about this is like, I care about future rewards, but I don't care that much as I care about present rewards. This is just a mathematical formula that tries to emulate that. And this delta factor, the, most clo the, the closer it is to one, the more I care about future, uh, about future pro profits, and the more closer it is to zero, is I'm more closer to be a myopic, um, a myopic, myopic player. And this is, well, and now we have a repeated game. So let, let's take the game we were playing before, for example, um, pick just one, and, and we, they, they play it indefinitely. So they know that this, these oppor EV opportunities, for example, um, will always exist. Um, they also, we will assume that these players can observe past actions played by other players. And all, let's assume as well that these all players like uh, share this, the same delta factor. And the player's utility right now is just the sum of all the revenue that they obtain per round, multiplied by this discount factor. So let's make a recap. We started with honest, um, honest players, honest validators, honest miners. Uh, we moved to, to honest Byzantine, and they're too rational, but myopic rational. They just care about the results that the game is played now. And now we move through to rational and non-myopic players, players. The thing is, um, when you assume that the game is just is playing differently many times, what you have is like, as we mentioned at the beginning, is like the folk theorem. Maybe like here, there will be a mathematical description of it that I will not describe with all detail, but fundamentally what it's saying is like, the number of Nash equilibria, the number of things that could happen and will happen is much bigger, and now they have ways to like push the other players to cooperate and to find and extract all the opportunity by themselves and maximize their revenue. So for, the thing is like, they have strategies to push also all the, the other player to, to do so, and all these mechanisms that maybe we build, um, we will, there will be problems. So in some sense as well, it's like before we had, um, they had problems to cooperate, but now it will be very easy for them to cooperate. Um, the consequence of this, of the theorem is like players probably, but definitely will collude, there will be imperfect competition. That perfect competition that we had at the beginning won't exist anymore. Exists equilibrium that would not have the, the, like, the system performance that we would like, for example, when we were building the, the, the layer two protocol. 
and we will have very, very unpredictable outcomes. Like we want, this mechanism design that we are building won't enforce um, the actions. Reviewing the first example with this, um, with this Fock theorem in hand, there will exist strategies that they will split the arbitrage opportunity for both players. Um, and, no, no, and since this is Nash equilibrium, none of, of them will deviate and will take another strategy. This is good for the searchers, good for the bots, but very much for, for miners in general, because now we don't have this egalitarian like distribution uh, system. Um, the second example that was like, this layer two that allowed to like prevent from running in general um, is no longer true because now we have there is a, another strategy that is more efficient than the strategy mentioned before of committing a revealing. Now, if players are non myopic, they will cooperate and they will first reveal and then and then commit. They will maximize the payoff to, to doing so, and moreover, it will be an Ash equilibrium. Um, so. Uh, and um, one, time, one time again, the system performance is not what we would like to, and it's not what we will have to expect. So in, in Resio, like, um, as a summary, like in, in the myopic model, in some sense, it's easier to predict the outcome of what players will and will do. Um, players will compete against each other, so they are enemies in some sense. Um, and the design, of the, the design of the game can have an impact uh, on improving the system performance that we would like. However, in the non myopic model, uh, it's very hard to predict outcomes. Players can and will cooperate. And the design of the game not necessarily impacts the system performance we would like. Um, so as a conclusion, um, I would like to say, like, um, well, the behavior model um, um, can impact uh, um, a lot about um, what will happen. So these assumptions, it's very important to take into account. Um, rigid systems where players cannot uh, leave, like enter and leave easily, um, will lead to collusions. So we imagine you have a, like, uh, let's say a, a very, like players are competing for solving an optimization problem that it's very, very, very hard. And you know that there is just three players and, but they can do worse um, and obtain more benefits to doing so, they will do worse and, and obtain more, more revenue. This is more like an open question, like actually this folk theory makes sense. Actually, like players are non-myopic non in reality um, because uh, do we see examples of it? Because right now, like in general, uh, we see players being like just like uh, rational. If they are rational, they are being rational just for finite amount of time or like they, we don't see that much collusion. So maybe it does not make sense, the model of, us, um, of all the assumptions of, of these repeated games. So if it's not real, um, can we formalize um, something more close to what happens in blockchain technology in general? And can we prove formally a folk or some anti folk theorem in DeFi games? The bad, the bad side of it is like if folk theorem holds, or like if if, if like the non myopic um, um, model holds in reality, and and you have uh, like games where you don't have, for example, differential privacy. That differential privacy can, for example, can break uh, folk theorem. Um, then this decentralization can help, but for sure it's not a panacea and it's not uh, completely a solution. And that's rush. And um, but. The thing is, all these games, in some sense, um, we have not assumed what the user is also a party. So the user can also punish um, bad, uh, behavior, bad behavior and bad miners. So I think like a way of potentially solve it is like constructing better reputation, reputation systems in order to, to like, okay, let's say that users now are more able to like see bad behavior, see collusions, and therefore like doing less transactions. So at the end of the day, players do not have incentives to collude because users that are also parties as well in this game um, will punish them. So more or less that's, that's all. Um, I think, um, uh, thank you very much for your time, folks. Uh, thank you, Bruno. Yeah, I think it was very interesting in in his talk, also Tim Rothgarden was saying that basically when you move to this blockchain setting of anonymous players and civil exactly. resistance, like all of the 
game theory just doesn't hold anymore. And no, 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 like definitely, like actually it's like, okay, this is in theory very, very good, but since you have differential pri privacy, for example, there are theorems that when you have large games and differential privacy, um, the Fox theorem doesn't hold anymore, and fundamentally what will happen is that players um, will play something very, very close to the stage game, so mechanics design makes sense. But there are also, like, um, nearly for every game, there, also, there is also, uh, like, a fault theorem. But in general, the, thing, the very difficult part of it is, like, to build um, fair strategies, like, in the repeated game, to build fair strategies that are as well CPU resistant. So the, the main problem is about, in the, in the module, but because here we, ha we assume that there is no, there is no uh, anonymity, like, there are, um, there are identities, and people know each other's identities in the module. You don't have that. Collusions are very, 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 very hard. Right, yeah. I think this is such an interesting like, uh, work. Yeah, thanks. Is there any question from the audience? Um, hello. Um, I just wanted to ask from a mathematical perspective, the kind of like quote unquote problem I see with Fultz theorem is first like your, the delta is the same for everyone. And second, you are tacitly, I mean, you are folks, I don't know, is tacitly assuming that you basically have a continuous function, in particular an exponential. But I could have a um, discontinuous function where I decide beforehand that I play for 30 rounds and then I'm off. So the first question is, uh, is there a generalization of folks theorem that doesn't assume this continuity thing and that has private deltas for every player. Yeah, like the delta is just a simplification that makes the proof easier, but you could have, like, the only thing you need is that the, at least one, like, the player with a smaller delta, um, like, you, what, fundamentally what folks theorem say is that players are in, in off location, um, collisions will happen. The thing is, like, you could rebuild this in other ways, like, at least, like, this, the player with a smaller delta is bounded by some constant. So you don't need the same delta for all players okay. in general. Also, you can model the utility function, no, but no, but this is just an example of a folk okay. theorem. Ah, there are okay. infinitely many folk theorem, let's say. And then the second question I have is that the fact that we prove that there is ex exists an equilibrium clearly doesn't mean that that equilibrium is easy to compute, and in fact, usually is very, very hard to compute. Yeah. This means that I do agree that maybe if we repeat the game long enough, this has been observed experimentally as well, players tend to converge to some uh, cooperation strategies, but there is a huge cost to go there. Like you, you have to get scammed a lot of times until you find the cooperation, so that is probably another factor that we have to factor in, right? Yeah, and in, in generally in, the, in repeated games, the, the Nash equilibrium, like there are a lot of Nash equilibrium, but the efficient ones are like, depends on the game, of course, but it, like very straightforward games is easy to compute because it's through punishments, yeah. and it's very straightforward to compute it. Um, but uh, the concept you mentioned is what maybe the, the most important one is mm -hmm. like, because in, in one thing is when you when you have identities, but when you don't have identities, exactly, what you need is resources. Yep. So you invest resources, and the resource like when you're investing resources, you need to like now you, you just you need to you do, you just don't need um, the concept of, of being equilibrium, but just being stable or at least converge. Precisely. And that convergence it's when everything breaks down, like every that everything that is like that is this is just like a, uh, like it's nine it's. It's more like, an, it, that's the thing, it's like, in general, we won't converge. Actually, um, one of the things I'm working on, or like, um, I think I'm, I'm managing to prove is like, in some games, when you don't have, like, you need to, like, players are not just players in, anymore, but invest some resources. Yeah. There exist equilibria, there exist ways of doing so, but however, they are not stable. And therefore, they will not converge to that equilibria, so, even though you assume that that will happen, they, saved. they will leave. Okay. Well, they will leave in some sense. No, no. I mean, it's definitely. I think it's it's not. We are still dependent on the constant because if you you, are, you have a game that you need one billion dollars to play it, and there are just two agents with one billion dollars, you have to assume that they will call it, yeah. they will. But in general, if like it's a small system that you don't need very very small number of resources to enter than to leave then it's very safe yeah. in that sense. So it's, it depends on the game you play. It's, cool. The Thanks. easier it is to identify the other player, um, the worse for, yeah. for the users. Yes. 
Um, Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right, let's thank our speaker one more. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you.